back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a V-band conversion on this Max Speed and Rods GT3582 Turbo. So this Turbo Factory comes with a 4-bolt V-band, or 4-bolt flange, I'm sorry. It comes with a 4-bolt flange, it's a 3-inch. Um, the reason that we're going to be converting it over to a V-band is because for the Turbo kits that I make, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass in order to put these 4 bolts, especially the 4th one at the bottom corner. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you guys how to convert it over to V-Band. It's actually pretty easy. So now some people get a little bit scared at this point because this is cast iron or cast steel, whatever it's made out of. So the issue with that is if you were to weld it like a, like if you were going to do like stainless or anything else, um, if you don't do it properly, all of your welds are actually going to crack and your V-Band is going to fall off. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do it today. But... couple of things but we're getting back into the e92 drift car um 500 horsepower ebay built if you guys haven't already go follow him it's suicide underscore e92 and you'll see the turbo build process that we were doing at the beginning for this but now we're going to be doing a v-band conversion on it so basically i had the turbo pulled apart i had to compress the side with the wheels and everything on this side and I had the hot side so we're going to put this one to the side over here so basically all I'm left with is just the hot side of the turbo. So factory, when you get this turbo, you'll have your four bolt flange that's on here. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to show you guys on the video on how I, I cut it. I do have um like the TikTok videos I made on this, so it's kind of like a, a shitty video, but I'll post it in here for you guys. But anyways, um, that's how I cut it. So before what I did was I just put this hot side inside of my bandsaw and then cut it. Now it's kind of hard to grab it that way because sometimes your clamps, they move. So what I did was I built this jig. All it is is um, some tube steel and everything. I made sure it was completely flat. And then I drilled some holes for a T3 so it can bolt all the way flush. So that way when I put it in there, I can level it out with a, with a speed square or something to my blade so I can make sure I get a straight cut. So that's how I cut this. Them before and they work
All right, you guys, so we have the carbide bit onto my die grinder, Milwaukee die grinder, it's my little two amp battery. So now all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go around the lip on here. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. All I'm doing is like maybe a quarter of an inch cleaning up on the lip so that when I throw my weld on there, I have something nice to weld on and not that cast stuff that's gonna be cooking and everything. And you'll see why later. So basically I'm just gonna go around it real quick and clean it up. Um, I had safety glasses. All right, don't forget your safety glasses. Metal shavings inside your eyes is not something that you want to have. So I'm going to clean these up a little bit and start cleaning it up. cleaned up all the edges real nicely all right so now now that we have the flange and everything cleaned up it's prepped for welding so now we got to get everything cleaned up we're going to get this cleaned up we're also going to get the female side of the b-band once i get the right one we're gonna get the female side of the b-band cleaned up so the way that you clean your stuff before tig welding is you use some acetone um, usually i pour this inside of a little water bottle but i don't know where my funnel is at so I don't feel like I'm making a mess right now so I'm just gonna pour some into a rag and it's gonna go around the whole manifold or the whole housing of the turbo just clean it up this is a new turbo it's never been used before so there's not really any soot or anything that I have to clean up just basically any of the oils that they put inside there from when they ship the turbo this turbo has been sitting for I want to say maybe a year now. So, you know, the gruesome rust and stuff like that. You know, always clean your material. It is still dirty. That's going to be the V band. So, I'll show you guys why you want to clean up your stuff. So, these are also brand new V bands. I just got them in. So, I'm going to pour some more acetone, clean side of the rag. And then now we clean. Clean the inside as well. And that's the dirt that comes off of it. Um, it'll show you. I'm not sure how well it's going to pick up on the camera. I hope you can see it. But this filler wire is 309L. These are um, 1 16th. No, these are 332nd rods. Or 1 16th. It's one of those. I forgot what it is off the top of my head. I want to say 1 16th inch rods is what I like to use. Um, 332nds are. I don't know. I can't think right now. It's late about like one in the morning right now I couldn't sleep so that is why we're making a YouTube video so anyways you grab your rods and then you want to make sure those are clean as well the cleaner you can get all of your stuff the nicer end product you're gonna have if you're welding on on dirty material um, dirty filler oil soot rust anything on your material um, leave that for the stick welding guys and the MIG welding guys TIG welding, you want everything as clean as possible. Um, it's going to give you a better result. It's going to protect your cup on your on your TIG torch. Um, if you're welding dirty material and all that stuff, you're going to get splatter and a whole bunch of stuff that's happening inside of the weld. And what that's going to do is it's going to back up your gas lens on your nice VRBBW cups. 
it's gonna get all that dirty and everything and then you have to do you have to replace the lenses and all that stuff when you didn't have to if you would have took care of the stuff um another reason is um everyone loves the rainbows on the tig welds and everything that doesn't just come from skill and all that stuff it's all you know you have to make sure everything is good to go make sure that your tongue is nice and sharpened make sure you guys have good clean um shielding lens inside there make sure you guys have the proper flow of argon your material is clean proper filling material it's all the little stuff so my tungsten is a little little dirty kind of hard to see it's a little dirty i was cleaning the welding table um i was sanding it down getting rid of all the rust make sure i have a nice surface area to work on so that i don't have any issues with my ground so i'm gonna go ahead and sharpen my as right, guys so tungsten freshly sharpened i'm gonna put this bad boy in there and since like i said i am using a fiorg bbw i do like to stick out my tungsten a good amount so i stick it about an inch out so that's my setup for those of you that don't know or haven't watched my video since day one I do use a Harbor Freight Vulcan Pro TIG 205. I absolutely love this welder for my gas setup. Um, this is just an Amazon um, gauge. So one line goes to my welder and then one line I have spare um, in case I want to do any back purging. Um, this yellow rag here is just to prevent any dust from going inside my welder, messing up my welder. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on. takes a few seconds to boot up once it's booted up um, I'm welding this cast iron so hopefully you guys can hear me the fan is loud <clears throat> let me actually shut that off so it's a really good welder um, the only thing is that the fan is as soon as you hit that pedal the fan is on full blast the whole time um, I think it shuts off in about like five ten minutes something like that but anyways so to weld this cast iron i'm probably going to put it around like 90 95 amps and then i'll play with the pedal i probably won't use the full 95 amps um another process another step in the process that you're going to have to do is when it whenever you weld cast iron like i was saying before is if you don't do it properly it will crack all of your welds so one of those things is using 309 filler the other one which is the most important one is preheating the metal so we do have to preheat preheat this entire housing so what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna grab the old four bolt pins that I want to cut off not high enough but it'll do I'll probably just leave it there all it's doing is spacing it up for me so that way when I lay my v-band on there it's not completely sliding off so what I'll do is I'll center that on there Let me show you guys I'll center the v-band onto the housing which it, it mates up perfectly. This is this, I think it was designed to use a uh, V-band on here, but for some reason they just put this four bolt, but it's 2023, nobody uses bolts anymore. <clears throat> Switch everything over to V-band. So much better, thank me later. So anyways, this is gonna get placed on there, and then I'll probably put some tack welds and everything to hold it in place. While I'm doing that, you're gonna put your female, your male side of the V-band on there. You're also gonna put your clamp, <coughs> sorry. You're also gonna put your clamp on there, and you're also going to tighten it as tight as possible. The reason you do that is because when you start heating this up and you actually start welding the flange on there, you're going to warp the flange. So if you keep the male side on there with the V-band, it helps the distortion of the, the flange. So it helps keep it true. So keep that in mind if you guys are ever welding V-bands. You guys can also make um, buy like heat sinks or something like that um, to help keep the heat away from it. But... So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna get my torch. So let me get that. So here she is. I just use a regular, um, what is this? Butane, map gas, propane, map gas. Just some map gas, um, I light it up. And what I do is I stick it inside the intake side of the manifold and I just let this thing heat up. So you wanna get this thing up to like 230 degrees, 300 degrees, 320, something like that. You wanna get it hot. Um, you'll know it's hot enough when it starts steaming and all that stuff, all the oils and all the rust and everything starts steaming off. Um, you should have like a little thermal gun. Unfortunately, I don't have one, but it's all right. We'll just get it hot enough. 
and then once it's hot then you can start doing your welds when you're done welding it this is the most important part don't let it cool down as, as fast as possible don't like throw it in cold water don't put it on a fan or anything put this torch back on actually and turn the heat down and just let it cool down naturally nice and slow because if it cools down too fast it'll crack so the heat's gonna be your friend so let's go ahead and start this all out the way and that's all you got to do so hopefully this is in view of the camera so basically the torch is just inside the, the hot side of the turbo <coughs> so now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna let this all get hot so hopefully you guys can hear me with the torch and everything too but when you start welding this you want to take the flame out actually because the flame that's going inside of the turbo, remember it's a turbine housing, so naturally the gases want to come out the exhaust side, which is what we're welding. Uh, when you start welding, you want to get this gas out of here because it's going to start interfering with your argon. And you're going to start seeing splattering and everything all over the place. So make sure it's hot. When it's hot, get this out, weld, and then when you're done welding, put it back in. So put you guys on time lapse. Let's get the bad boy welded. getting heated up now I'm not sure if you can see it on video but she is steaming hopefully you guys can see that so she is starting to steam she's starting to smoke up a little bit so we're getting closer So she's all welded up. So you can see the inside. So now I have the heat on low so that way it cools down nice and slow. So once she's cooled down, then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Alright, you guys, so she's all welded up. <clears throat> so here's the end result. So now we have a Max Speed and Rods GT35 Turbo with a V band flange. So that way you don't have to worry about the four bolts and then you have to use a gasket and all that stuff. So, let me get you guys a close-up of the welds. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys can see that. It's welded all the way around on the inside. And then the outside as well is welded. Now the welds don't come out as pretty as it would like if you were to weld stainless or something because you are welded cast so you do have the the nasty cast material when you weld cast <clears throat> well to be at the beginning the way cast is made is made out of a whole bunch of like random metals recycled metals and all that stuff that's why cast is very cheap to make so you don't know what's inside of a cast so when you weld it and everything, you can have like different types of iron, steel, um, all that stuff that's inside there. I'm not a metalist guy, but when you start to weld it, you'll see little splatters and everything, especially from the outside. But on the inside, we didn't have that as much. On the inside, I weld nice and smooth, but it's always the outside that gets me. I don't know why, but the welds don't come out as pretty as if it would be like a stainless pipe or something because you are welding cast. So there is a bun bunch of junk inside there, but the welds do still come out pretty good. It is strong, so now we are good to put this turbo back together. I'll do a quick little assembly for you guys. So there we go, our Max Speed and Rods GT35 is fully put back together. Shout out to Aaron at, out at Max Speed and Rods. Now with our V-band, 
So now with your male side, you'll put it on and you'll start welding your pipe and everything. And then you'll have your hood dump or your down pipe, whatever you guys want to do. In this case, we're going to be doing a hood dump. So if you guys would like to see the hood dump um, process of the fabrication and all that stuff for this, I'll do every single thing. I'll show you guys how I cut the 90s and all that stuff to make the teardrops. If you guys would like to see that, um, leave a comment on there and then I'll make a video for you guys. But that's going to be it for this video. Um, hopefully this inspires some of you guys to weld your own V-bands on there. You don't have to stay stuck with the four bolt flange and the gaskets. And then you have to use adapters and everything so you can go to a V-band. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Just chop it off, weld a V-band if you have the skills and the, and the welder and everything to do it. Um, you can probably get away with MIG welding and everything as well. <clears throat> but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you guys like it, please give me a like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. And we'll keep putting out new content. But other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.